Hello and welcome to Planning Your Professional Development. Once again, I'm your co-host, Eric Powell, with AmeriCorps VISTA in Washington, D.C., alongside Calvin Landrum here. Assisting us are our partners, Andy Clark and Scott Weinrow from Education Northwest. You will see them in the chat and the Q&A to assist you during the session. Scott will also come back a little bit later in the presentation to give us a brief tour of the VISTA campus. So first, thank you to all of you who have been posting to the chat question. Actually, never mind. This session shows you how to make the most of your year of service so that while you are building capacity in the community, you are also building your own capacity. The VISTA program offers a lot of resources to support your professional development, but the best way to make it happen is, of course, to start with a plan. In this session, we'll help you plan for your professional development and point you to resources to make it happen. Yeah. So, to get us started, uh, you know, we want to hear from you. Your first few weeks of service have contained a flood of information. Since you've begun settling into your organization, your community, and your VISTA position, tell us, what is one goal that you hope to accomplish during your service? Use the chat panel to share your response. And remember, if you don't see the chat panel, click on the speech bubble icon in the upper right corner of the screen. You may have joined VISTA you know, to become involved in anti-poverty causes or to learn about nonprofit management. Perhaps you saw an opportunity to become a better public speaker or to help a specific community that is meaningful to you. Maybe you have identified challenges related to your work and your professional development. Please share your thoughts now in the chat panel. We know a lot of you have a lot of goals you want to accomplish, and we're looking forward to hearing some ideas. Let's see, what do we got? Anything in the chat panel? Youth development, community outreach, nonprofit management. Very nice. Learn more about on running a nonprofit. All right. Let's see. Improve public speaking and overall. Uh, missed it. We got grant writing. To create partnerships and work on additional funding. Oh, these are great. These are awesome. We'll be talking about some of these during the presentation. Learning the needs of the community in which I'm serving. That's great, Brittany. Strategies to attend to those needs. And how to help the obesity and children in my community. That's a very pressing issue um, and, and, and an admirable one to take on. Yeah, yeah keep, keep posting those in the chat. We want to see them as we go through the presentation because um, we definitely want to learn more about the goals you have and how we can assist you in accomplishing those goals during your year of service. Totally. Um, so we want to take a moment also to see where you're located. You should see a panel of annotation tools on the left side of your screen. Uh, if you click on the pointer tool, it's the one that looks like an arrow, and use it to point to where in the U.S. Uh, you're serving as a VISTA. Let's so take a second to look for those annotation tools on the right side of your screen, or sorry, on the left side of your screen. Use the pointer tool. Oh, wow, this is so cool. Okay, so full disclosure, this is the first time that we've used this, and this is actually really cool. Where are all the VISTAs in <laughs> Arkansas? How come there's no one in Arkansas? We got lots of people in Texas. Uh, I am from Texas. This is Calvin speaking. I'm from Waco, Texas, uh, you know, in the Austin area. So it's nice to see a lot of Texas people represented there. I see some people that look like they're serving in the Atlantic Ocean, but that must just be because it's supposed to be in Florida, but it's all good. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people in the Seattle area, Portland, Oregon area, Midwest. Let's see, NYC, anyone in D.C.? Katie Denton said, yay, Austin, Texas. I just moved from Austin to D.C. Uh, I miss Austin a lot. I miss the weather there. I uh, miss tacos and I miss uh, the music. Uh, it's such a great place. I love it. I tell everyone that I miss it. There. It's too hot there for me, but I guess the last. I'll stay where I am. All right. Cool. So, that, man, look at that. We got people from all over the place. All right. Well, we even got someone in Southeast Alaska. Way to go, Mark. Way to go, Mark. We got Maryland, Austin, Houston, Albuquerque. Yeah. People have a lot of pride in where they're from. I'm from Texas. I'm a diehard Texan. I will always be a Texan. All right. Well, thanks, guys, for responding uh, to that. I'm so glad that worked out. This is really cool. Um, so let's go over our agenda for the day. Uh, we're going to start with an introduction uh, to, to three key tools that will guide your year of service and professional development journey. We'll then share four steps you can begin now to plan and reach your professional development goals. We'll close the session with a brief walkthrough of some important VISTA campus features 
Uh, then we're going to open up the lines uh, for your questions. Throughout, so throughout today's presentation, you know, we'll have opportunities for you to share your thoughts and explore the Vista campus. So let's dive in and take it away, Eric. Let's do it. Remember, your year of service is not just a year of community development, but also of professional and personal development. During your pre-service orientation, PSO, you learn some of the basics of understanding your VAD, creating an individual development plan, and navigating the Vista campus to find helpful resources. Now comes the fun part. It's time to take your initial thoughts and turn them into action. So let's first revisit one of your most important tools. Your responsibilities as a VISTA are outlined in the VISTA assignment description, also known as the VAD. And yes, you should be glad about your VAD, and I created that. <laughs> At PSO, you reviewed your VAD and began to think about what it'll take to accomplish it. In the time since your PSO, you and your supervisor have likely come up with additional activities to support the achievement of your objectives and to capitalize on your unique strengths so your VAD may be refined somewhat from the original version. Yeah, definitely. Um, so, you know, at PSO, you also begin identifying the knowledge and skills you'll need to be successful in completing your VAD. You start outlining them on your individual development plan, or IDP. If you have your plan handy, go ahead, go ahead and take a look at it now. If you don't have the one that you started at PSO, you can download a copy from the Vista campus uh, that looks like the one on the screen. The link can be found in the chat panel. Think of your individual development plan as your bridge between your VAD and the accomplishment of your goals. You may know where you want to end up, but having an IDP allows you to plot your path with concrete action steps for building your skills. Though you started working on your IDP at PSO, you might not have everything filled in. So if you want to, you know, just take a moment now and fill in the last box, um, learning opportunities and resources, if you haven't already. Uh, during this webinar, you'll be introduced to lots more resources that you may want to add to your plan. So take a minute to just kind of look at that now. <clears throat> Thanks, Calvin. Now that you have some development goals identified, let's start looking at some opportunities for you to further your knowledge and your skills. I'm sure that the VISTA campus by now is quite familiar to you. It's a great starting point for VISTA-specific resources, and it's a connection point to the VISTA community. We've identified all three tools for success, your VAD responsibilities, your IDP learning goal, and access to the VISTA campus. You are ready for professional development action. These four steps for action were developed with input from other VISTAs who shared tips about what helped them be, helped them to be successful during your year of service. Yeah, so let's, I guess, start with step one. That's a logical place to start is step one. I like it. So you've only been a VISTA for a few weeks. You're becoming accustomed to new surroundings, a new workplace, a new income level. Review the VISTA member handbook to answer any policy-based questions. Speak with your supervisor or other team members about the community, the VISTA project, and your role. And some of you may even have a VISTA leader. Contact the VISTA member support unit with questions about your living allowance, benefits, or the education award. Uh, you can contact your state office uh, for support regarding emergency, supervisor issues, or a VISTA policy. Oh, and and don't forget to speak with your supervisor or other team members about the community at the VISTA project and your role. Yeah, it sounds like we just listed a bunch of resources for you. You've got your project, you've got your VMSU, your state office. Possibly a VISTA leader. Possibly a VISTA leader. So, so, so in addition to our supervisor state office and the VMSU, you have access to the entire VISTA community, including current members and alumni, some of your fellow VISTAs may have faced similar questions or challenges, so you can benefit from their experience. Check out the insight VISTAs have left on the VISTA forums. You can also ask a question or offer your own advice. The VISTA forums are a great resource for all kinds of things. There's recipes there. There are tips on getting integrated into your community, uh, tips on living on the living allowance, you know, how to manage your education award. Uh, if there's a question you have as a VISTA, there, it's very likely that someone has talked about it on the VISTA forums, Absolutely. Uh, answered that question, has provided some sort of resources. Uh, go check those out. We also recommend that you check out our on-demand webinars on topics such as living on the living allowance, using your education award, and planning your life after VISTA. You can find these webinars on the webinars for VISTA page of the campus. Oh, and speaking of the living allowance, 
Uh, by now, most of you have received at least one living allowance payment. Woohoo! Yeehaw! Money, money, money. Money. <laughs> if you're being paid directly by the VISTA program, you can access your living allowance statements in My AmeriCorps. If you're being paid by your sponsor, then you'll receive a pay statement directly from them. So just as a reminder, we do not withhold anything for state income tax, so you may want to set aside a little money each payday so that when tax time rolls around, you don't have, well, that you'll have the funds to pay the tax um, and that you're not uh, stuck with a tax burden that you can't pay. If you have any questions about this, please contact your state tax office. Uh, they have all of the information, all the resources available to help you make the appropriate decisions. Absolutely. So switching gears a little bit, but still related to the topic, you will recall at PSO that we spent some time talking about strategies you can use to reduce the burden of making student loan payments during your year of VISTA service. If you have not done so already, please be sure to investigate these options to figure out which ones will work best for you. If you selected the My America the Education Award and have federally qualified student loans, you have the option to put them in a status known as National Service Forbearance. You do this using your My AmeriCorps account. Look for the link under the My Education Award in the left menu. And once you've submitted a request, you can come back here to check the status on that request. Yeah, I'm going to take a second here to plug uh, my Living on the Living Allowance webinars. If you have loans, um, sorry, my student loan webinars, if you have student loans um, that you're dealing with and trying to manage, uh, there is an excellent on-demand webinar that you can watch um, on the VISTA campus presented just a few weeks ago, um, and it's all about student loans, using the Education Award, uh, and, you know, how to manage those and strategies for maximizing uh, your living allowance, um, you know, and managing your student loans while you're in service. It's really, really informative. If you have any questions, go check that out. Definitely. Thanks, Calvin. That's a great plug for that. Related to that, clicking the forbearance request when you're in the My AmeriCorps portal will take you to the forbearance request form where you select your current term of service and then click on the link for search institutions. That's an important link because people forget about it. Uh, once you have found your lending institution, you can submit your forbearance request. For more on the student loan information, as Calvin said, there's a great website about the Education Award that also explains these various strategies for managing loans while you are in service. We also have a couple of on-demand webinars, as Calvin mentioned, so definitely take a look at those. And most of the links that you'll need have been posted into the chat, so check out those as well. Cool. Thanks. Uh, another dimension is getting settled into your organization. It's important that you feel comfortable in your organization where you'll be spending most of your time as a VISTA. I mean, oftentimes you're spending more time in your project than you are at home. At least that's how I feel most days. Uh, if you haven't done so already, schedule a regular check-in meeting with your supervisor. This is, this is essential to your success in meeting your VISTA goals and ensuring that your project is sustainable. Next. Take some time to explore what has been done before. Dive into documents that lay the foundation for your organization, including their, their strategic plan, their mission, their vision. If there's been VISTAs at your site before, review their accomplishments through past quarterly reports, which your supervisor can probably share with you. Finally, take some time to get to know your colleagues. I get to know Eric every single day. I learn something new every day. Build those relationships, that's key. <laughs> Meet with people in various departments to learn about their roles and how you might work together. These contacts are also likely to have connections in the community that would be helpful. One of my favorite things to do is to walk around this office. I'm always walking around, always chatting with people. Uh, so step two, once you've started making your connections and identifying areas of growth, it's time to turn your VAT into action. Let's do it. Having a well-structured work plan uh, helps you jump into your service and track your progress. While you are working in the community, you may forget to record all of the incredible work you're doing. So how does one begin to create this plan? First, meet with your supervisor to review your VAD and develop measurable goals. Again, having, re again, having regularly scheduled check-ins will ensure these goals are being reached and allows you to discuss any questions or roadblocks. Make sure you, to keep your VAD somewhere accessible in your office refer to a, and refer back to it periodically to track your progress. If you have a cube, just post it up in your cube and take a look at it every now and then. Your supervisor may recommend you participate in additional training related to your VAT, which is always an excellent idea, always great for, for personal and professional development. Take yeah. advantage of any extra trainings that you're able to get through your VISTA year. So, 
we want you to create a plan to track your achievements now. The Vista Impact app uh, is a tool that allows you to track your activities using your smartphone or your computer. Keeping along of, so keeping a log of your activities and successes will not only help you when reports are due, but it will also give you a clear record of your achievements to reference when you finish your service term. Uh, think about, you know, at the end of your year when you're creating your resume, it's going to be really nice to have something to refer back to. Say, you know, I raised this much in donations. I mobilized this many volunteers. Um, you know, I was able to assist this many children, uh, you know, get connected with a tutor. Um, but these are all really great facts and hard details that you can add to your resume, um, you know, or even bring up in interviews if you are interviewing for, an, for another job, anything like that. The Impact app uh, is available only through the Vista campus, and we'll show you how to access it and add it to your device, or add it to your device during our brief campus walkthrough at the end of this presentation. We also encourage you to view a recorded webinar highlighting the Vista Impact app. You'll learn more about the Vista Impact app in just a bit. The Vista Impact app a lot of times. Say that five times fast. Vista Impact app, Vista Impact app, Vista Impact app. No, didn't work out. You can also. All right, so we're going to step three which is take time to learn and grow. Now that you've identified some action steps, it's time to determine ways to improve your skills that relate to your VAT. It's likely your VAT includes things you've never done before, and, and that's okay. This gives you an opportunity to learn something new. On the Vista campus, the work, on the Vista campus, the work section, <laughs> contains self-paced tutorials covering a variety of specific skills. Vista offers monthly webinars covering topics such as recruiting volunteers, holding effective meetings, and building community networks. I wish some people here would take the holding effective meetings uh, course because sometimes they have meetings that aren't super effective. That's okay. There's a pretty extensive library of on-demand sessions available on the, webinars on the webinars for VISTA's campus page on the campus. VISTA also offers online courses called the VISTA Blend. These 10-week online courses can be completed for college credit. So be sure to consult your supervisor and plan your workload accordingly before taking advantage of these learning opportunities. And Calvin, before we move on, I you you know we talk a lot about talking to your supervisor. Someone posted a question about my supervisor retired and they haven't hired anyone yet. What do I do when the new one starts? What do I do in the meantime? That's an excellent question. Uh, yeah, in the meantime, you know, I recommend getting with your state office. Take a second to get, to give them a call if you have a state office representative. Uh, someone that you've been working with, give them a call and explain uh, that this isn't their first rodeo. They're really, uh, they're not new to this situation. Um, so they have, you know, so much information. I'm sure they've dealt with this before and say, hey, this is, what, this is what you should do. Maybe it's write down what you've been doing, kind of come up with a plan of attack so that when you do get a new supervisor, you're not feeling lost and waiting for someone else to tell you what to do because you already know what you're supposed to be doing. Because, you know, you've taken the initiative and you've come, you know, and you've come up with a work plan on your own. Um, you know, maybe it's someone coming in from a different organization that has new ideas, and they say, you know, give them a chance. Meet with them one-on-one, -on -one, uh, ask them, you know, what would they like for you to do. Whatever it is, the state office is going to be a great resource for you to, um, you know, try to, to navigate the new relationship with a supervisor and to navigate um, the time period when you don't have a supervisor. That's really, really good advice. And the only other thing someone mentioned was, as of instance, since you're documenting your success and your progress, make sure you record that and hold on to it, that when your new supervisor comes in, you can help your state office educate them to say, here's my progress, here's what I've understood now, and that way you guys are both learning together to help grow the project and your VISTA assignment description. Yeah, someone said, no one called me back from the state office. Um, unfortunately, we do hear that a lot. They are very busy people, which, you know, I'm not going to say that's an excuse, um, but they are more responsive to email. If you look in the chat, ND just posted how to email your state office. It's basically your state abbreviation at cns.gov. If you're in Texas, it's going to be tx at cns.gov. If you're in, what, Washington, it's going to be wa at cns.gov, and so on and so forth. Shoot those guys an email, and they will 100% get back to you. And as we talk about resources, we'll, we should now talk about how to learn using additional resources. While the Vista Campus is always a good place to begin building your knowledge, there are many, many other free and reputable resources available to help you get started. We'll mention a few examples that might be helpful, but my mentioning them does not mean that they are endorsed by the Vista program, nor by the Corporation for National and Community Service. 
Even with all the digital and high-tech resources, brick and mortar public libraries are still very, very valuable learning sites. I have a library card. I actually haven't used it in a year, but I probably should. It's a great place <laughs> to go. Many libraries have access to online databases and grant writing resources. Librarians are usually well-versed in the latest digital trends and resources. Plus, many libraries offer free access to audiobooks, ebooks, movies, music, and more. It's your free entertainment right there. Seriously. I think they call it free, free entertainment. Free. It's like one word now. That, I don't know. Free, inter free entertainment. Free entertainment. Free entertainment. Like your friend. <laughs> Plus, the libraries have bulletin boards that you can use to post notices for volunteers and recruit for community meetings. And you might even find a recreational or social opportunity for yourself. Networks you already belong to might be useful as well. Some regional or local alumni groups could also offer programs or have a means of connecting you to other alumni. Oh, uh, I think Andy's going to put in uh, ynpn.org. Uh, that's the Young Professionals Young Nonprofit. Young Professionals Nonprofit Network, YPN. Go to YNPN. YNPN. <laughs> and you'll find out what that acronym stands for. It's a Young Professionals Nonprofit uh, Organization that's national. It's a great place to go to find. Let's see what we've got. Oh, Indy did post it. Thank you so much, Indy. We really appreciate it. So uh, let's talk about some more professional uh, organizations. So professional organizations are uh, another great resource available to help you meet your knowledge goals. In addition to connecting you to other individuals in your field, these organizations can offer significant professional development and networking opportunities. So while not all of their events and resources are free, uh, it never hurts to see what's happening in your area and ask your supervisor if you might be able to attend. Some of these organizations have entire sections of their websites dedicated to professional development and career advancement. Those of you in the resource development field should check out the Association for Fundraising Professionals website and explore their professional development section. It includes everything from conferences and leadership training to executive institutes, certification options, and a whole lot more. VISTAs working with volunteers are encouraged to look at the Council for Certification in Volunteer Administration. That's a mouthful. The Council for Certification in Volunteer Administration. <laughs> review this. So if you go there and you review the certificate requirements, uh, you should see if that sounds like something you might want to do later in your career. Even if you don't complete the certificate now, you can still get great tips uh, and resources from their website related to volunteer engagement and management. Uh, and don't forget about Points of Light as well as Energize, Inc. Energize Inc. has tools directly related to career advancement within the volunteer management field. For those of you in communications and marketing, the Public Relations Society of America understands that nonprofits face unique challenges. Their website, shared on your screen, uh, has seminars, newsletters, and other resources devoted to help professionals develop public relations and management skills directly relevant to the nonprofit association environment. If your VISTA service includes developing a training program or education series, that's sort of like what we do here uh, at the VISTA Training Unit, check out the Association for Talent Development. You'll be able to subscribe to newsletters, watch webinars, and follow and learn from leaders in the field of training and curriculum development. Additionally, if any of you are serving at a neighbor works organization, and even if you're not, be sure to explore the many training opportunities offered by NeighborWorks. NeighborWorks America offers training on everything from nonprofit leadership skills, to professional development, community, community development, community assessment, supporting minority populations, et cetera, like a whole range of community-related trainings. Finally, don't overlook local development opportunities such as those offered by Volunteer Center, United Way, a Chamber of Commerce, Toastmasters, Urban League, or national organizations that might have local branches in your community. Chamber organizations often host professional mixers, as well as events directed towards emerging community professionals. Uh, I don't know if you've ever seen, they have like, you know, entire cities will put out lists, like the 30 under 30, you know, those are the, their people who are doing great things in their community. Find out how to tap into that. Uh, get some shine, get some exposure for all the great work that you're doing. Absolutely. <clears throat> so while there may be a fee for many of these resources that we mentioned, uh, don't be afraid to ask your supervisor if you could pick one resource or training to pursue. There's also a chance that scholarships might be offered through the associations or training institutes, and it really never hurts to apply. 
And before we continue, uh, I know some people were asking if I'll get a, a copy of the PowerPoint. So if we can go back to the previous slide just for a couple seconds. If you really want to know what those websites are, feel free to take a picture of it with your cell phone. I know it's a lot to write down, but we'll leave it up for about five more seconds. Take a quick snapshot. Uh, we want to make sure that if you need those websites in the next week before we're able to get it uploaded, at least you'll have, have a copy of it and you'll be able to go back to those websites later. Yeah. I'll prefer a couple more seconds. I'll count down. Let's do five, four, three, two, one. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. All right. So has anyone found um, a free course or resource that was especially helpful to you? Uh, is there an affinity group or professional organization you think resonates especially well with your business service? What was that one TED Talk that you saw that you think everyone should watch? Share your feedback in the chat box now. Take a look at what people have. And Rebecca and Adria, thank you for uh, satisfying our humor. We appreciate that. Yeah, we do. We try to make a lot of jokes and keep it light over here. Uh, so let's see, what resource have you used for your professional development? What do we got? Nonprofitready.org. I haven't heard of that one. Someone's used the library. Great, great for option. Sure. I need to get a library card. I moved to D.C. a couple months ago, and I still don't have one. And I'm technically not a resident yet, so that could be an issue. I think in most cities they're free as long as you show proof of living in that city. Someone says colleagues, friends. Uh, don't underestimate uh, the power of just putting out a Facebook message uh, or anything like that. I mean, if you're looking for housing somewhere, you're looking for training, your friends uh, and your colleagues are – really wonderful resources. I mean, they have a complete experience different from yours um, and may, you know, have insight into, you know, some different things going on. And Rebecca, thank you for posting YouTube. I know a lot of people use that for fun, but there are some very reputable, uh, whether it's seminars, learning, professional development, even, you know, I had to learn how to replace my parents' thermostat. Well, I went to YouTube. <laughs> you can find so many educational opportunities watching self-created videos. Totally. One of the um, – also, one of my favorite, going back to Facebook, um, look on Facebook um, and join an alumni group on Facebook. I find so many great, great activities to do, um, networking opportunities. There's people who are always posting, you know, things for free, things for sale, um, happy hours, you know, with other VISTAs, with NCCC members, with state and national members. The entire AmeriCorps family is really represented um, on alum groups. So take a look at those. You know, if you're living in Seattle, type in Seattle AmeriCorps alums, and I'm sure it'll pop up. Um, and just join that group and check out what's going on in there. Um, I'm a member of the Austin AmeriCorps alums, well, D.C., uh, Texas yep. State, uh, all in Triple C. Like, I mean, so many alum groups uh, that are that they, they really share a lot of resources, job postings, um, all kinds of good stuff. A couple more quick ones came in. I know someone mentioned edX.org, EDX, also the Austin Chamber of Commerce. Definitely check out your local Chamber of Commerce because I see Katie, that helps you to become an AmeriCorps VISTA member, and we also recommend – if someone was influential in helping you become VISTA, let them know that. They, they'll they be happy to hear that. LinkedIn is one of the best connections along uh, with Twitter for business purposes. I try Twitter. I'm not too great at Twitter, but I do love me some LinkedIn. Uh, you all can find me on LinkedIn. That's Calvin Landrum. Uh, you'll find me there. Uh, connect with me. I'd love to connect with VISTAs. You'll see it. You'll see, you'll see me there if you have any questions you can ask. And as we talk about getting connected in step number four, this is our final step. As you know, you're already part of the VISTA family. You may not have other VISTAs specifically at your site, but you can always connect through the VISTA campus or as any other resources we just talked about, like LinkedIn, Volunteer Match, et cetera. Fill out your project area on the VISTA campus profile and input your interests. Add a photo as well. We want to see you. Interact with other VISTAs on the VISTA forums by posting a question or a suggestion. Connect with VISTAs through social media. Calvin just mentioned Twitter, Facebook, et cetera. Also, if you haven't done so already, identify yourself as an AmeriCorps VISTA member on LinkedIn and connect to the VISTA groups available there. And if there are other VISTAs in your area, arrange a get-together to come together face-to-face -to -face and share specifically what you all are doing and learning. You guys, are, you guys are the best resource for each other. You can find VISTAs in your area along with alumni and leaders by using the VISTA map, which we saw earlier. Think about reaching out to alumni because they often know the area and are happy to help current VISTAs. Also, speaking of Get Connected, show your pride. As a VISTA family member, don't be afraid to show your VISTA pride. You never know where you may make a connection with someone else who knows about the program. Sometimes I sport the VISTA uh, lapel pin, 
it's not here for the Yellow AmeriCorps. And I'm thinking, well, yes, <laughs> but you should say AmeriCorps Vista because we're Vista. <laughs> uh, but the, the important thing is that you're getting the message out there. Make sure that you identify yourself as a Vista by putting the logo on your business card if you provided one in your email signature, which is a great place to do it, or your organization's website, social media platforms, brochures, or other communications. In the web links in the chat, you can find places to get Vista publications and gear to use to decorate your office and represent Vista in the field. So, does this mean free T-shirts and all caps? Uh, that is not what that means. There are links for you to uh, go pick up a shirt, though, if you need one. Um, you should have gotten a polo shirt uh, at your uh, at PSO, um, but there, you know, is a place for you to go and get some additional gear or pens or things. Um, if you're anything like me, uh, our office dress code is, you know, like business casual, um, but I myself uh, put the emphasis on casual, and I get away with that a lot by wearing my Vista branded T-shirts uh, and Vista branded things. It really works out well for me. Uh, and I'm, you know, I got lots of Vista pride. I'm rocking it all the time. Come and show us this pride, and we love it. <laughs> Similar topic, but related, in terms of showing your pride, you would have already developed your minute message at PSO which is a short speech about your organization and your role as a VISTA. Um, make sure to rehearse it often so that it comes easily to you and you, you can explain quickly what you do. There are plenty of resources on the VISTA campus that can teach you about creating these messages. Also, when you're out and about, don't forget to take pictures and share them through your social media outlets. Again, you never know when VISTA may share or retweet your photo or service story. Shameless plug for our social media accounts. At AmeriCorps VISTA. Yes. So some of you ask, how do I get connected to my community? I don't feel like I necessarily fit in. Well, you should, because you are part of the community. Once you're clear on what you're setting out to accomplish, get to know who's around you. Start by doing some preliminary research. Look at research done by other organizations on your community, such as needs assessments or studies. Search for local organizations on your community, such as newspapers or articles that might give you a pulse on what is happening in your locale. Of course, also take a look at websites, blogs, or social media channels that are producing reliable local candidates. In a community, face-to-face -face interaction is vital for establishing trust, as you guys probably know from at PSO and at your site. Try to attend social functions, such as community festivals, networking events, neighborhood meetings, open houses, or fundraisers. Just being visibly seen in the community and being supportive of other events, as Calvin said, wearing your Vista Polo shirt and pride, makes people want to be more invested in your work. Begin scheduling meetings with community leaders that you've met at these events. And don't forget to ask your supervisor to connect you with someone who is willing to serve as your community champion or ambassador. An ambassador is someone who can help you connect with your community. This person should be an established community member willing to give you background on the region so you can approach your visit service in a more meaningful way. You will learn much more attending events or talking to someone who knows about the community. But if you don't have a community champion, don't let that stop you from exploring and learning about the area you'll touch during your Vista service. Totally. Uh, this is really funny, Sarah. I'm looking at the chat, and someone says, I've been handing out business cards like crazy. And then Molly says, what do they say? And then Daniel says, business. Nice. <laughs> My business cards just say business on them with the AmeriCorps Vista logo. Uh, that's really funny. <laughs> All right, so to recap, let's go back over these four steps. Um, here are your four steps to help you maximize your effectiveness. Uh, that sounds like an infomercial, maximize your effectiveness. Uh, but here are your four steps. First, get settled into your life as a VISTA. You know, really get to know the program, your site, and your community. You know, turn your VAD into action by developing your learning goals and holding yourself accountable for reaching them. Uh, take the time to learn about the resources available to you both inside and outside of the VISTA campus. Uh, and finally, get connected with other VISTA alumni and others in the community who can, you know, support your success. Ooh, that was a mouthful. Uh, so, you know, now we want to take a second and uh, move things in a slightly different direction. It's going to be a good old time. We're about to have Scott come on with for us. Um, but you've heard about three features on the VISTA campus that will help you stay connected and informed. That's number one is the VISTA benefit. So Vista Campus Benefits page, uh, two is your learning plan, uh, and three is your learning connections. Scott's going to switch over to the Vista Campus now to show you how to access these features, as well as any others that were mentioned during this presentation. 
I think Scott's coming on in just a second. Yep, he's just switching over the roles. Nice. Oh, look at that. It's another the campus. Yep, here I am. Thank you very much, Calvin and Eric. And uh, hi, everyone. It's really nice to be with you today. Um, my name is Scott Weinrup, and uh, I'm glad to have the chance to talk with you a little bit more about the Vista campus and do kind of a, a live tour. Um, so the campus uh, is designed, uh, we hope, to be really easy to navigate. Uh, what you want to do is just roll your mouse over the different drop-down menus and see the different topics you can explore. I think the areas that you'll be especially interested in are life as a VISTA and the work. So earlier we talked a little bit about the benefits page. You'll find that under life as a VISTA in service. Just click benefits. Um, it'll look very familiar to you from your uh, pre-service uh, online coursework on the campus. And the benefits page is really designed to be kind of a, a one-stop shop for all information about all of your different VISTA benefits from living allowance to health care to professional development to um, the Ed Award. So uh, as you explore the benefits page, just scroll down and uh, look for a different benefit that you might be interested in. You'll see an overview on the information tab and then just click resources for uh, kind of more detailed uh, information on that benefit. So um, Calvin and Eric also mentioned the Vista Impact app, and I wanted to show you how to find that. Uh, you'll also find that under the Life as a Vista menu, under In Service, and then click on Impact app. Uh, scroll down, and you'll see a link to actually connect to the Impact app. Uh, just for folks who might have been looking for the Impact app on uh, the Google Play Store for Android or for uh, the, uh, the, the iOS uh, uh, App Store. Uh, you don't need to worry about that. Actually, the Impact app is really a mobile-friendly website that will work on any device. It'll work on your computer. It'll work on your phone. Um, you don't have to download anything or get it from any App Store. Just uh, go to this site on your computer or on your mobile device, and you can log in using the same login that you use for the Vista Campus when you go to the Impact app. Um, another feature of the campus that I wanted to mention and really draw your attention to is the learning plan. So when you signed up for an account as a VISTA, you, you got a number of um, uh, training items suggested to you and added to your learning plan automatically. You can find that in a couple of ways. When you're logged in, you can just click on learning plan under the drop-down menu uh, uh, underneath your name. Um, you can also um, get it from the home page. But I'll go ahead and click on Learning Plan, and you'll see you have your required learning. So that was the starting VISTA page that you did before you started service. Uh, there's also a number of suggested learning items that were automatically added to your page. But um, one of the cool things that I'll talk more about in just a moment is you can make learning connections with other VISTAs and supervisors and alumni, and then you can suggest uh, useful campus resources to each other, and they'll appear here under Suggested Learning on your Learning Plan. And then finally, there's a column for favorite content. This is a feature that we built into the campus just to make it easier for you to bookmark uh, resources that you found that, that, that you uh, have found to be useful. So um, there's a lot on the campus, and when you find stuff, something that you really like, uh, you'll be able to bookmark it, and it will appear here under favorite content so that you can always uh, quickly navigate back to it. So um, let me show you briefly how you can bookmark an item. Uh, and I'll also use that as an opportunity to demonstrate the search engine that we have built into the campus. So let's say that I'm looking for a resource on tailoring my resume to my VISTA service. So I'm just going to type in resume. Uh, it works even without the accents. Um, and then let's say I heard there was a good um, webinar on the topic. So I'm going to scroll down here to format, and I'm going to filter down to recorded webinars on resumes. And this is the one I think I was looking for. And anyway, it sounds interesting, translating this to service to your resume and career. So I find it, and it's a, it's a recorded webinar. I start to listen to it, and it's really good, but I have to go and do something else, so I want to come back to it. All I'd have to do then is add it to my learning plan by clicking that button, and then the next time I go to my learning plan, it'll appear right there on the favorite content as, as a bookmarked uh, resource. So I mentioned learning connections. Let me show you also how you can make learning connections with fellow VISTAs and supervisors and so on. So from um, your account uh, profile page, and I got to that by clicking uh, the little drop-down menu under my name and clicking my account, I can click on the learning connections tab. 
And then what I can do is I can search either by focus area or let's say that I want to make a connection with my supervisor who happens to be named Celia Supervisor. So I search for her by name and then I see her picture. I know that's her. All I have to do is click the little plus icon and it'll send a connection request to Celia. And then uh, once uh, she's accepted, then we can both message each other through the campus and we can suggest our resources to each other as well. And then uh, another thing that uh, uh, was mentioned earlier is the Vista map. So I just wanted to point to where you can find that. That's under the Connect and Learn menu, where you also find links to the Vista forums, to the Vista blend, to the webinars page that we've mentioned a few times, and, and a few other things, including the Vista map. So um, that's a way to easily find folks in your area. So what you can do is you can just zoom in and on the map uh, where you're serving, and as you, whoops, I zoomed out instead of zooming in. So let's say I'm here in Boise and I want to find uh, other vistas in my area. I just keep zooming in until I oops, resolve to the to Boise. Um, well, I think uh, of course any live demo, some something will not go perfectly. Uh, but here we are. I have a lot of a lot of folks in my area, so I just click on the pin. Um, I can add that person or make a connection request right from the pop-up by clicking the plus sign or I can uh, learn a little bit more about them by clicking their name and seeing their profile, seeing uh, what they've written about themselves and see their organization and their project area and then just click the plus sign to uh, request a connection. So that's just a little bit about the, the Vista campus. Uh, to get you started, I'm going to go ahead and hand things back to Eric and Calvin and uh, let them take it from there. Thank you, Scott, for that wonderful tour of the campus. Seriously, yeah. it'll be very useful. Such a That's good tour, guys. Right? We definitely want to hear from our participants again now that we've gone through the campus and talked a little bit about some resources they can use. As Calvin said, we've covered a lot of information today, but taking into account your four steps for action, what is one next step you can take today after this webinar ends? You may want to bookmark the member handbook on your learning plan of the Vista campus, schedule a coffee with a coworker, or search for the next date for a community association meeting. What are your ideas? Share them in the chat box now. Yeah, and while we're waiting for, for some things to come in, we saw a couple of things in the chat. Someone said, um, hey, can I just make my own business cards? Uh, totally, that's, that's totally fine, make your own business cards. Um, my advice would be show it to your supervisor before you get them printed just to make sure they're cool with it, that the logo's all right, all that stuff. But, I mean, yeah, totally, well, why not? Uh, and use the Vista logo if you need to. It's a public resource um, for all Vista members. Uh, someone said T-shirts, sweatshirts, go for it. Uh, if you are looking to have some T-shirts printed, you know, maybe for your organization with the American Vista logo on it, uh, that is an acceptable thing to do. Uh, so let's see, what people say? Uh, Does anyone have any ideas on what next steps they'll take immediately after the webinar to continue their professional development journey? I know some people earlier talked about websites they wanted to visit. Um, Joining the YNPN right now, very nice. Uh, I'm, I am don't know if I'm a member of the YNPN, but I know I've been there, I've explored it. I think I, I to do it, so I thought I did it, but I just never followed through with that. Absolutely. I should get on that. And Lakeisha says she's going to sign up for another one. I assume she means webinar. That's great. As Calvin said, we have tons of webinar about your life as a VISTA and the work, so definitely check those out on the campus. Let's see. Set up an informational interview. Always really fun. I love doing informational interviews because I like to talk a lot, um, and I just really enjoy conversation with other people. Um, I do it often around our building around our own organization, just asking people, hey, what do you do? What's your job? What's that like for you? How did you get there? Um, you know, sort of what was your path? Have you done national service before? Um, you know, I ask lots of questions of people just to get to know them um, and just to check out, you know, how people got to where they are. Absolutely. And I want to give kudos to Nadria. I hope I'm pronouncing her name right. She brings up an excellent point around communication. How you use your minute matches and talk about yourself is important. So. Yes, you are a VISTA member. Yes, you are a VISTA volunteer. But some people associate the word volunteer with certain things, so you may want to call yourself a VISTA member because you are. So just understanding how you call yourself and how people understand that you are a VISTA member, you're not a staff member, um, that really helps people understand more of what your role is, that you're not just a volunteer, you're a member extraordinaire. 
a member of something larger, you know, than that. Exactly. Let's see. Paulina said she is going to make a to-do list, take action. Uh, that is an excellent idea. Uh, for example, start attending community meetings, get a library card, et cetera. Um, I need to get a library card also. Um, attending community meetings, excellent way to meet your neighbors, um, you know, and really get a feel for what's going on. Um, I know my neighborhood here in D.C. often has community meetings about all sorts of things. Uh, about garden projects, um, about crime, about, you know, zoning things. Um, so sometimes they're really interesting. Uh, sometimes not so much, but sometimes they are very interesting and always uh, a great place to uh, meet people, if nothing else. Absolutely. All right, cool. So we want to uh, present you with some, with some next steps. So, here's some, so here are some immediate next steps you can take today. First, take time to complete your individual development plan, or the IDP. Use this webinar and the VISTA campus to enhance and identify some goals. If you don't have a regular meeting scheduled with your supervisor, reach out to them and schedule one. It's so important uh, that you have a regular meeting with your supervisor. Um, I can't stress that enough. Uh, it's an excellent way to check in and just make sure that you're on the right track. Um, I know even myself, sometimes I get nervous, say, oh, man, am I doing the right thing? Uh, you know, am I performing well? Am I, you know, meeting all of my, you know, goals that were set up for me, um, and, and having that, that meeting with your supervisor um, is a way to answer all of those questions and get some really great feedback. Um, let's see, uh, identify a resource, an on-demand webinar, a self-paced course, or a helpful video uh, to add to your learning plan for review. Um, also, you should reach out to another campus user through the Learning Connections feature on the VISTA campus. Um, we've seen some people posting in the chat about where they're from. So you have where they're from, you've got their name, now go find them on the VISTA campus. Say, hey, we were on this webinar together. Uh, thanks for your info, thanks for adding you know, that resource, or whatever, however you want to make your introduction. Uh, finally, research a professional organization in your current field or in a field that interests you, um, such as paranormal ghost hunting. Uh, and investigate a typical career path in that area while looking at online trainings, resources, and webinars. Uh, so we've talked a lot, and we've given you a lot to think about, and I'm pretty sure you have some questions. Uh, but, but before we start the Q&A session, we want your feedback on this presentation. You should see an evaluation poll on the right side of your screen. Please take time to answer the questions in the poll. Uh, we'd like to be able to improve these webinars, and your input really helps us. Um, these do not go into a black hole somewhere. We get this report after every single webinar, um, and we really take your comments very seriously. So please take a moment to review this webinar uh, and rate us. Um, give us your honest opinion and feedback um, so that we can make this better uh, in the future. Um, again, so you know, the evaluation will be up. You should see that. Um, so take a minute to fill that out. Um, and while you're completing that, we can start with some good old Q&A. Nice. So if you do have questions, again, there's two ways to ask them. You can use the Q&A panel that some of you have been using in the WebEx functionality, located in the bottom right-hand corner of your screen. We'll also turn it over to Kevin, our operator, to let us know how to ask a question over the phone. Kevin? Thank you, sir. At this time, if you would like to ask any questions over the phone lines, please press star, then one on your touchtone phone. Be sure your phone is unmuted and please state your name at the prompt so we can announce your name prior to you asking your question. Again, please press star, then one on your touchtone phone if you would like to ask any questions. As, as we wait, one final comment we'll mention, and we mentioned it a little bit earlier, but know that your VISTA position is not just about accomplishing your VAD and fulfilling the mission of the organization. But again, part of your VISTA service is professional development. That's why we do this webinar. That's why we want you to ask questions and get as many resources and information as you need, because we want you to grow professionally and personally during your year of service. So you can use this year to hopefully help improve your life and improve the lives of those around you and those in this area you're serving. I 100% agree with that statement. Uh, so let's see, what do we got in the Q&A? Anything in here? Yeah, lots of comments, lots of comments. Uh, I think we answered that one, let's see. So is there a way to search just for communications or people on the Learning Connections page? Uh, looks like Scott answered it, but we'll reiterate. Uh, 
Yes, you can filter by focus area on the Learning Connection search page as well as the map. So that's, you know, that's easy enough. Yeah. And Kevin, if, if we do have any questions on the phone, feel free to just interject and let us know. Not a problem, sir. Right now showing no questions, though. Right. Okay. See, will you go back over the app, please? Uh, let's see. Yeah, so let's, we can talk about the Vista Impact app for a second. And Andy and Scott, are you able to easily go back to that slide? If so, if you could quickly go back to the Impact slide and we'll just mention again what its purpose is. Yeah, so the Impact app um, is used to help you keep track of your accomplishments over your Vista year. Um, with the Vista Impact app, you can track um, all sorts of quantifiable things that you do uh, during your service. Um, and it really is, for, you know, and at the end of your service, you you can have, you know, this entire sort of report that lets you know, you know, man, and these are all the things that I've done over the course of my year. Um, yeah. We we do call it an app, and I think, I know Calvin mentioned this earlier, but just to reiterate, we do call it an app. It's really a mobile tool. It's a website-friendly device that looks like an app when you download it on your phone. But again, as Calvin said, you might be out in the field. Um, working with volunteers and, and recruiting volunteers, and maybe all of a sudden you're talking to a community partner and you just happen to recruit four volunteers on the spot. You can use the app to just quickly type in, oh, I just recruited four volunteers. It uploads it all to the system so that it's all there for you to record your work. You don't have to be at a uh, physical computer just to log that information. Yeah. Uh, keep in mind that the Vista Impact app, we call it an app, it's not an app in the traditional sense that it's available through any sort of app store, uh, but it is a uh, web-friendly, you know, application that you can go to, you know, like on your mobile browser, um, and it'll pop up as sort of like a, like an app format. Um, so you can't download it, uh, you know, from the app store, you can just na navigate to the Vista campus, uh, find the Impact app, bookmark it so that you can get to it easily so it's not cumbersome to use. Um, you know, and just have it on deck and, and, and have it ready for when you need to write down some numbers. Because as a Vista, you will be making an impact, a positive impact in community, and that's what we call it the Impact App. Look at that Impact App. Uh, looks like someone else asked a question. I said, this isn't totally, totally specific to this webinar, but what number can we call for help with benefits, payroll, et cetera? Uh, I think, ex excellent, excellent question, Molly. So your best resource for those questions is going to be uh, the National Service Hotline uh, or the VISTA Member Support Unit. Um, the VMSU uh, is your basically HR company, sort of. I mean, if you think of it that way, um, if you have questions about your payroll, about your benefits, your education award, uh, really anything to do with your service here, you can definitely call the VMSU, uh, and we will post that into the chat. Um, but then the phone number is 1-800-942-942. 2677. Uh, we'll post that in the chat box so that you have that. Um, but they're an excellent resource. If they can't answer the question, they will definitely point you in the direction um, of the person that you need to ask the question to. Um, so, like, when in doubt, you can always call the VMSU or you can even email them. Uh, that's going to be VMSU at cns.gov. Uh, they're also very responsive to email um, and typically get back to you within the day. Um, yeah, so give those guys a, a holler. So someone else <clears throat> asked, Katie asked, are there any recommendations for after-service planning? Well, if I'm reading the question correctly, one great resource we have, and I know Calvin works on this diligently and very well, is a Life After Vista webinar that specifically talks about, you're doing this great year of service, you're making this great impact, how can I look at towards the end of my service at Life After Vista? Yeah, totally. Um, so, uh, full disclosure, I did not serve as a Vista, but I did serve as an NCCC team leader. Uh, for two years, and that was, you know, my service path. Um, and I can say, you know, towards the end of my year, it, it gets really scary. Um, so I definitely understand if any of you are getting towards the end of your year, I understand, like, the, the sort of nervousness that comes along with maybe not knowing what's next. Um, for me, uh, my after-service planning was really working on my resume, um, making sure that that was on point, uh, that I had listed everything that I've done. Um, you know, I gave it to a lot of people to ask them to edit and review. Um, luckily, there are lots of people around me who are willing to do so. Um, I'm sure in your organizations there are people there that, that would love to look at your resume and give you pointers. Um, I'm sure that there are some libraries that have career centers that will help you out with that. You can call. Um, I mean, there's all kinds of resources to help you with your resume. Um, we've done webinars on how to 
translate your VISTA service to your resume. I think we have one coming up uh, actually pretty soon. Uh, so but be on the lookout for that. Um, yeah, and really capitalize on those connections. Let people know. Um, there's, not, there's no shame in saying, hey, I'm ending and I don't know what I'm doing after this. Do you have any leads? Do you um, know of any jobs coming up? Do you have any friends um, you know, in, 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 any, in any other organizations that may be able to help out? Um, you know, and continue to do a good job on your VISTA project. For me, that was key. Um, I received my job at CNCS because I did a great job during my service year. People saw that and they, you know, and I was offered a position here. So continue to do really good work on your VISTA project. People see it, it shines, uh, you know, and that's sort of how you, you know, if you're looking for a job, you know, that's one way of getting one. Um, yeah, I don't know. I just talked a lot, but continue to, you know, work on that resume, reach out to your connections, um, and figure out how to talk about your VISTA service um, in a way that is impressive and meaningful. Thanks, Calvin. I know we have just about 60 seconds left. Before we finish, Scott and Andy, I'll ask, can you quickly go back to the slide right before the evaluation slide uh, that says your next step? Someone just wanted to take a screenshot of it. Uh, it's titled Your Next Steps. And then I think we have time for one question on the phone. Kevin, are there any, is there one question on the phone? Yes, we do have one question from Hane Pakut. Your line is open. Yes, uh, thank you guys uh, for the information. Um, I would like to ask if there is any best way uh, to, to get funds, because I work with a brand new uh, uh, community here in Salt Lake City, and uh, they have a lot of youth uh, programs, especially with soccer and basketball. But uh, they are working with this small amount of grant that they get from the state. So uh, is there any other ways? Because I know Vista really doesn't have the funding for these kind of startup activities. But if there is not the best way that I can, I'm working on the way that we can generate funds and do the fundraising through the community like selling Kool-Aid, for example, cookies, uh, because I've been with the community for about uh, three months right now. Is there other ways that you guys can could recommend for me to, to help? Because I'm trying to get some grants, but it's not really easy to get grants, especially from um, private donors to get funds for the startup communities or uh, programs. So um, I I don't even know if we I don't even know that's that is an entire college course in and of itself. Uh, you know, asking you know how do you get more money? Um, it's true that the Vista program does not have uh, many grants for individual programs and projects. You know, like such as grant money. Um, but we do have excellent resources available on the Vista campus for grant writing. Uh, you know, and for soliciting fundraising or. So for soliciting donations uh, and fundraising, um, your state office is going to be a great resource for uh, you know for tips and tricks on getting grant money. That's one. That's what they do. They review grants all the time. Uh, you know they have been in this for a really long time, so they know you know what works, what doesn't. They may have um, knowledge of additional resources that maybe you haven't tapped into yet. Um, I'll reach out to them, you know, and say, hey, I'm looking, you know, I have this program, this is what a project I'm working on, uh, we're trying to find some funding for this, um, you know, do you have any leads for me, anything that I can follow up on? Um, they're going to be a really good resource for you. Um, let's see, Eric, do you have anything else? I was just going to add, and I'm, I'm posting it in the chat, we didn't specifically talk about it, but at PSO, you, you heard us mention the VESTA Blend, B-L-E-N-D, it's a series of courses that we offer free of charge to VISTA members, and one of them is actually on resource development, fundraising, and grant writing. So I know you said it's a little bit challenging to get a grant, but if you wanted more resources on how to effectively write a grant or assistance in, um, assistance in finding ways to effectively write a grant that might be useful for all types of organizations, you're welcome to take out those courses. I think they should be available fairly soon to apply, but again, it's free of charge. Uh, but as Calvin said, talking to a state office, or sometimes even simply Googling, Google searching, not just um, donors in the area, but sometimes when you make those connections to the community, not that you can necessarily ask directly, but there might be other nonprofit organizations who partner with your organization who may have affiliations and can either do an in-kind donation or assist somehow in helping your organization 
continue the work that they're doing at a low cost. Yeah, uh, yeah. Thank you so much. I I attend one of them with the University of Utah a few years ago, when I was the uh, the treasurer for the Sudanese community way back in about two and a half years ago. Um, the reason I said that is because the uh, the private donors like they want to make sure that something is something exists and I mean they existed already and they they saw the progress that was made. But to start something, this is what I'm concerned. But I'm going to try other ways to connect the uh, grant within the community because the yeah. communities are well established. That way we can just put a, a small program within the community projects that we are working on. I think that probably could different, could bring different results, which is um, I'm working on. But thank you so much. Last. And I also, at the end of this month, I'm planning to attend uh, another uh, grant writing workshop, which is going to be, I think, two weeks uh, with is provided at the Salt Lake, uh, one of the Salt Lake libraries. So I signed up for it. It's going to be about three, four days uh, grand riding. So I'm going to try to do my best to get these kids. They, most of it, they just need uh, some shoes and some uniforms for them to perform these teams and be able to compete with the other teams around the, the Salt Lake area. Great. All right. Thank um, you guys so much. I really appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. All right, so this is for real going to be the last question. This is the last one that we see posted, and I don't think we have any more on the phone. Uh, we have a couple of minutes. We have a short time to get to all of them, so let's do it. Um, Katie asked, is it easy to transition to the Peace Corps program from being an AmeriCorps VISTA? Um, I heard that was one option after service in addition to federal jobs. Uh, that's an excellent question. Um, so it's not a, just a straight up, hey, you are a VISTA, please come join Peace Corps. Um, but in your Peace Corps application, it's definitely recommended that you emphasize your VISTA service because they prioritize previous national service. Um, Peace Corps sees things like NCCC, state national program, FEMA Corps, uh, the VISTA program, you know, as national service programs um, and know that the people that do these programs um, are of a higher quality candidate than a lot of other people. Um, you know, we have some, like, vague interchange agreements, you know, with Peace Corps in, in, in that we all work together because we're all part of like the same kind of global service family. Um, federal jobs um, are easier to transition to after your VISTA service. Um, at the end of your VISTA year, you are afforded what is called non-competitive eligibility, uh, which is a really big topic and hard to get into. There is a webinar recorded on the VISTA campus if you want to know a whole lot more about it. Um, but basically it says, you know, that if you apply to a federal position, uh, you get um, some sort of priority, you know, over other applicants. Um, maybe you get moved to the top of the stack or get moved into the list of final candidates, maybe the top 15. Your application gets in there um, automatically because you served as a VISTA, which is a really wonderful benefit of your service if you use it. High quality, someone said high quality candidates, that's us. That is correct, Rebecca. You guys all are high quality candidates. Top notch. Um, whew, yeah. All right, so Great. thank you, Katie. Thank you, everyone, so much for your for being on this webinar today. Uh, We've got one final slide to show you at the very end. Yeah. We, of course, want to thank you for your participation, um, and I'll, I'll talk about the brief part at the top. We know that you have additional questions about webinars and topics like this. The website on the screen, Vista Webinars at cns.gov. We'll take a look at that and respond to your question as much as we can. Yeah, uh, and like I said earlier, we, have, we, we keep saying the word webinar. We have a lot of webinars, and that's what we do. We live, eat, sleep, breathe webinars. Um, we also have another one for your, for your professional development. I'll be hosting that. That's this is Calvin. I'll Sweet. be hosting that one. Uh, so please join us for this next session. That's this Thursday at 2 p.m. Eastern to get practical tips for building a successful professional relationship with your supervisor. Um, we spoke today about uh, setting up a one-on-one -on -one meeting with your supervisor. If you want more information, you want some sort of framework, uh, some tips on what questions to ask during that, please attend this webinar. Um, it's called Managing Up, Navigating the VISTA Supervisor Relationship. We have an excellent guest speaker um, who will blow, who will knock your socks off if you attend. Um, she, Unless you're wearing sandals. Unless you're wearing socks on. Yeah, then she'll knock your chacos <laughs> off. Uh, we have a really, yeah, it's going to be excellent. There's full, it's full of useful information. Uh, the guest speaker is incredible, um, and you don't want to miss that one. Uh, yeah, so thanks again. We hope to uh, you know talk to you all again. Thanks, Eric, for you know being here. We enjoy spending part of our afternoon with you or morning if you're on the West Coast. Have a great day. Buckle up, and 
Enjoy the Vista ride. Nice.